You want to check your equipment and make sure that everything's functioning properly. I'm talking about your hoses, no leaks, make sure your outdoor lights are working, make sure your water supply is, is functioning properly. So I'm looking for 10 to 15 centimeters of snow, followed by a forecast of two or three clear, cold days. Online, you'll see a lot of, uh, a lot of information about how to install outdoor uh, backyard rinks. Now, most of those, uh, they involve the use of these uh, solid plastic liners. We've got a lot of volunteers and friends in the neighborhood who like to snowshoe, get them to come out on the rink with their snowshoes, walk around, and that'll do a great job as well. Then the last step is to use a, a large plastic leaf rake to uh, smooth out any, any tire ridges or any uh, snow clumps or whatnot. You start in one corner, or you're working an area of say two meters by two meters. You've got your hose with a fine spray and you're just standing in one spot and you're just dropping that water onto the snow. You don't want to drive it into the snow because it'll kick it up and create uh, ridges and bumps and stuff. Now once you've got that saturation, that grayness, that gray tone, you just move over to the next two meter by two meter section. And once that first flood is completed, you've got five to 10 centimeters of solid ice that, that you can work with. It takes anywhere from 10 to 12 floods after I do that first base ice uh, saturation. After I put my hoses away, I'll walk around and I'll look for shell ice, particularly on the exterior of the boards. And I'm looking for areas where obvious signs of water having seeped out. I'll get some snow and I'll get some water and create some slush and I'll slush up those low areas on the outside, packing that up against the boards. And I'll allow that to freeze before I do my next flood. And if, it's, if you get plenty of cold weather, it, it doesn't take long, you know, a couple of hours between floods and you're fine. It's important to watch for shell ice and to plug those drain holes where your water is escaping. So at closing time, uh, I have a, usually have a supervisor on duty and that supervisor and I will pull our scrapers out. We use steel scrapers. Now I find that these steel scrapers do a better job of picking up that thin layer of snow. The more snow you can remove from your ice before a flood, the smoother your ice surface will be. And I sweep out that ledge where the ice meets the boards. I sweep that out and get all the snow out of there with the straw brooms. If you don't get that snow out of there, eventually uh, it freezes up, it gets uh, and rougher in the corners, and it also creates a danger for pucks to possibly injure someone. In my opinion, it's the difference between nice ice versus excellent ice. And once the scraping is done, it's time to pull the hoses. I flood with a fine spray. I don't want to put the water down too thick. Thin, thin layers of ice I find for some reason freeze harder and faster, smoother. I'm always making sure that I push any existing snow that hasn't been flooded yet, and I, I push that towards an area that's already wet so that any remaining snow will melt when it meets the, uh, the extra water. Always make sure that you're pushing your water towards a, a section of the rink that's already wet. Another tool that I use for flooding, it's called, a, it's a custom rink rake. I didn't invent this thing. I got the idea from a small plastic one that I'd seen in a store once. But it's a 10 foot steel pipe with one eighth holes spaced about an inch apart all along the bottom of it. And then there's a 10 inch uh, terry cloth towel attachment to it. And this tool, I don't, I don't use it often because it's, uh, it requires two people, one person to operate the rink and the other person to uh, move the hoses around. Uh, the ice will freeze hard and it'll freeze fast between games and, and it works quite well. Uh, there's a scraper, uh, ice scraper that's uh, handy for knocking down ice clumps or cleaning up along the edges of the boards. So another one of these big challenges is a uh, snow rain mix. Uh, that can be very problematic and something you want to watch out for very carefully. What I do is I'll watch the hourly weather forecast and I try to time it so that I get a pretty good idea as to when the snow is going to switch to rain. And I try to remove the snow before the rain comes. Because uh, if I can get that snow off the ice and then allow the rain to just settle on top of the ice, it's not an issue. It looks like a great big pond. I just wait for Mother Nature to freeze everything up and we're back in business. A classic example of a big advantage of having a packed frozen snow base uh, when mild weather moves in. In this case, this happened about five or six years ago. We virtually lost all of our snow as the picture shows. But because I had that frozen five or 10 centimeters of ice to begin with, it was able to withstand the meltdown. Now, another problem that you could encounter uh, is what I call line work or uh, the use of logos. Uh, that will create a type of shell ice as well. Now, 
I used to add lines and logos to my rink. I haven't done it for about 10 years, but there's no question it has a real wow factor, but it can create some problems. Uh, the dark colors of the lines or the logos attract the heat of the sun, and uh, that starts melting the ice just below the surface, creating this shell ice, and when you've got skate blades going over top of that, there's a risk that they'll break through that thin layer of ice, and it can create injuries. I do install curling rings on the puddle rink. And these rings uh, are basically templates that I lay flat on the ice and then I flood on top of these templates uh, to get the smooth finish. Once the curling is done though, I what I do is I'll cover those rings up with snow. I start out with a fairly large puddle rink, 60 feet by 120 feet. But then for the back half of the season, I uh, cut that into about half. Uh, which works out fine. I don't pretend that my methods are the best or the only methods. It, it all depends on your particular circumstances and uh, what's at your disposal and whether you've got storage facilities and whether you've got a lot of help and whatnot. I also want to refer you to the city's uh, outdoor rink manual. It's an excellent resource. Uh, it, basically the techniques that I've described are the ones that are described in that manual. It's a privilege for me to be able to share some of my experiences with you about how to maintain one of these outdoor rinks. I'm very passionate about this topic. I love being able to share ideas and best practices with other rink operators out there uh, because it's just something that I love to do. Thank you very much.